everybody pronounces that as ASCII, all right? To store a single ASCII character like H, all right, or D, anything, or a question mark, it takes eight bits or one byte. All right, this is just a couple, just to kind of give you a feel for the magnitude. One bit is the smallest capacity of storage. All right, one byte equals eight bits. And remember, a byte is enough storage for one character. D, five, W, question mark, dollar sign. Um, what do you call that thing? Anybody know what you call it? Is it hashtag? Yes. A pound sign? Yeah, pound sign, maybe. Pound sign, number sign. Nine. Yep. All right, and here's some more things. Uh, just to give you an idea of magnitude, you hear, you hear, you always hear kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes, and now we're talking stuff like tetrabytes and helabytes and stuff like that. A uh, kilobyte is um, 8,192 bits. A uh, megabyte is, or meg, most people just say meg, is 8,388,000 bits. A gigabyte, Got stuff in my way. Um, a gigabyte is over 8 billion bits. So in a computer, you can see just how, how small that these things have to be. All right, there's actually going to be, it's a brief one, but there's a homework assignment on this, so you really do need to know this. Um, this is not programming, but I want to kind of give you a feel for how to store these things. All right, um, these 11 characters, I am a nerd, all right? When I say 11, that counts the spaces. You have to count the spaces because they have to be programmed in too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, all right? And here's 11 bytes of material, or 11 bytes up here. This 01001001 is a capital I. All right. This 01000000 is a space. This is the only one I've got memorized. Okay. And uh, for your homework assignment, it actually make it goes faster if you memorize it too. 001, if this is a space. All right. A, M, here's another space, okay? These 11 bytes make up this phrase, I am a nerd. All right, a minute ago, I mentioned uh, ASCII, uh, an ASCII table. Uh, that stands for American Standard for Information Interchange. No need to remember that, that will not be a question. The key thing you know is, that between the numbers zero and 255, each number is associated with a typable character. All right, uh, the range that you all will deal with most are is from like say 33 up to, let's see on this chart, probably 128, all right? These are the ones you would deal with um, mainly. Each each character is associated with a number. There's no overlap. There's no two characters assigned to one number. Um, uh, and this um, this chart is universal. All right, here's how you use this. All right, um, I need to revert to my math teacher uh, days. Okay. Um, Inside the bot inside a byte, you have eight bits. All right. So you read a byte from right to left. All right. This is the first that this is the first character here, or first bit here. This is two to the zero. Okay. All of, all of these are two a base two to an exponent. Hence the binary part of it. So this first, this this first one is two to the zero. This is two to the first. I'm reading right to left. Two to the um, 
to the zero, to the first, to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, two to the seventh. Um, if you had me in class, you heard me say this a lot of times, anything to the zero power equals one. One million to the zero power equals one. All right, X to the zero power equals one. Anything to the zero power equals one. All right, um, anything to the first power equals itself. So in this case, two to the first equals two. If this had been 10 to the first, it equal 10. And then you just go on to the multiplying by itself. All right, two to the second is two times two is four. Two to the third is eight. Two to the fourth is 16. Two to the fifth is 32. Two to the sixth is 64. And two to the seventh is 128. All right. So here we've got this byte of information. All right. If you notice, I like I said, I consider this as turned um, um, play the first place is turned on, the third, the fifth, and the seventh are turned on. When they're turned on, you want to do the math on this, on each of those character, on, on each of those bits, and add it up. So in this case, zero one zero. Let's see, zero one zero one zero one zero one. All right. The first bit here is turned on. All right. That's two to the zero. So I want to add a one. Second bit is not turned on. I just ignore it. Third bit. Are you all able to see my cursor go across here? Yeah. Yeah. OK. All right. Third bit is turned on. That's two to the second. That means you're going to add four. Fourth bits turned off. Fifth bit is turned on. That's two to the fourth. So you add another 16. All right. Going across here, the seventh bit is turned on. OK, that's two to the sixth. You add 64. You add all these together. All right, you're going to get 85. And if I went back to the chart, the ASCII chart, 85 maps to a, I'm pretty sure it's a cap, a capital U. So that's how a bit is, I mean, a byte is read in out of storage. Got okay, another couple examples here. Um, if you've had me in class before, um, I'm trying to think who I might have. Elena's probably did this before. I always use this as a, like an icebreaker or um, I don't know, just a, uh, an early activity just to get students working with each other and stuff. I mean, I did this in my class just for fun before. Most students kind of find this a little fun as long as they don't have to do it too long. If you do a line, it's fun. If you have to do a paragraph, it's really a chore. All right, here I've got another another example. Zero one zero 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 one one. OK, the first, second and seventh bits are turned on. Two to the zero, two to the first and two to the sixth. I do the math on those two to the zero power is one. Two to the first is two. Two to the six is 64. 64 plus two plus one equals 67. I go over to my ASCII chart, my binary chart. 67 equals a capital C. All right, I'm going to do another one real quick. Uh, zero one 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 zero one one one. You can see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth are turned on. All right, I've got them highlighted here in yellow. You do two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, blah blah, all the way up to two to the sixth. You add those six numbers together. You get one hundred nineteen. And if you go to the chart, one hundred nineteen on the ASCII conversion chart is W. Guys, you got any questions on that? Pretty simple, kind of confusing. Just need to look at it a second. I'm all good. OK. All right. Um, so I will show you at the end of class. Each of you've got one line. It's a famous movie quote. I've got a file. Each one of you, it's six to ten words long. It's a famous movie quote. 
you need what you will need to do is just. I don't even know if you call this decode, uncode, decode. I don't know what you even call this, but let's call it decode. Yeah, you all will figure out what it says and type it back to me and, and, and send it back to me. It's so important to get full credit. You have to have the punctuation right. Um, don't think that you can just, oh, I'm three words in. I know what famous movie quote this is. You're, you're a big time movie buff and you know exactly what it is. Still finish it out because you need to get the punctuation perfect and the spaces, all right? Each one of these has, the, each one's going to have that one that I told you I've got memorized. It's going to have spaces to separate the words, the punctuation, uh, maybe an extra punctuate, an extra space just to accentuate something. Make sure you work through it. It's not a lot of work. You all will see when we go to it. All right. Um, now we're just going to talk a little bit about software. Okay, software is comprised of instructions to get a computer to perform a task. You're going to find software and programs um, used interchangeably. When you hear software, that's just a program. Um, software engineering is a synonym for programmer. So like it says, software is comprised of instructions to get a computer to perform a task. There's two main kinds of software. There's application software and system software. Um, ac uh, application software is stuff like word processors, like Word, uh, database uh, like Access, spreadsheets like Excel or Google Sheets, painting programs, uh, web browsers, email programs, games or games or application software all these things fall under application software they're usually things that are developed to perform a certain task system software is a little bit different system software works with the basics of your hardware it it, it allows you to run application pro software on it um, examples of of um, system software or operating systems like uh, Windows, uh, the Macintosh OS, Unix, and depending on how you want to say it, Linux or Linux, right? All these are oper operating systems. Right, and this is a, this is prob a probable test question. Uh, what is a program? A program is a set of instructions a computer follows in order to perform a task. All right. Uh, that might seem like a major duh, but it is like the main topic of this class. Uh, collectively, these instructions are called algorithms, well defined steps to complete a task. There is a time honored tradition on people that teach introduction to uh, computer science classes. Um, they'll come up with some, uh, they'll have the class in front of them and they'll ask them. Um, in this case, I'll just use uh, going to make a copy. I would ask everybody in this class to write down an algorithm, a, a list of instructions to get up from here and go make a copy up in the office. All right, um, the instructor usually gives the students maybe 10, 15 minutes to work on this, All right? Then he always picks one poor soul out and ask them to read it, All right? The person starts going through this and he starts correcting him. The person says, okay, I walk to the office and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, um, don't you have to stand up first? And the poor student goes, oh yeah, and then he goes, all right, then you walk to the office, then the student says, I go to the office, well, he goes, wait a minute, don't you have to open the door? And basically the instructor just, you know, nitpicks his whole thing, and good naturedly, I, I haven't ever had one being a jerk about it, but the whole purpose of this is to show that an algorithm is a defined set of instructions to a computer, all right? You have to remember, as people have these, have computers thought of as brilliant, 
computers are absolutely stupid. I mean, I mean, computers are dumb. The instructions have to be detailed. They have to take into account everything. And that's what an algorithm is. You're all going to find that out when you program. Initially, the first four or five weeks in this class, they're kind of cut and dry, but you're all going to have to actually draw an algorithm for some of the stuff you do in this class. And you got to think of how the computer doesn't know what you're talking about. You have to be really detailed. So that's uh, I spared you all. If we were in person, I probably would have uh, of, um, had you all do this and probably pick Luke out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, I, I don't. I don't know if it would have been you. Pick somebody out, you know, to share their instructions. Um, but the whole purpose of it is just to show you how detailed you have to be when talking to a computer. All right. What are programming languages? Okay. Programming languages allow programmers to code software. There's three major. Families isn't a good word. I should have just made this. There are three major levels of languages because levels actually are, is what we're talking about here. There's mach machine languages, assembly languages, and high level languages. Off of this slide, you, all you need to really know is we are going to be programming off of the high level languages. All right, the machine languages is something you will never see. You just need to know that it happens. At the very base of the computer, there is something has to go on with all these ones and zeros. All right. Machine languages are comprised of ones and zeros. It's the native language of the computer. It's all the computer understands. It's difficult to program. I don't know anybody that could do it. I mean, I I know some brilliant computer people, but nobody I know can, can program ones and zeros. One misplaced one or zero will cause the whole thing to fail. And so you can think when you're talking about running a program with uh, um, a trillion uh, bits and they, one of them out of order, you can see how difficult this is. So machine language is the lowest level and it's something that goes on at the very base of computers. Assembly languages. All right, now this is getting stuff where we can kind of understand what's uh, going on. You all won't be program programming in it. Uh, this is uh, something that they teach you probably your fourth or fifth class in college. Um, they let you mess with it some. It's extremely painful and I hated it. I hated it with a hot passion, but it's something uh, they want you to know how to go about it. It's called assembly languages, all right? Um, they're comprised of sets of uh, commands, all right? They will tell the machine language. All right, you want to add something to this register. You want to move something to this register and it actually starts to get a little bit readable. Here's an example of the code at the bottom. It says add R2. R2 stands for register two. Move R3, which is register three. All right, they're sequential. Um, like I said, you all won't be doing it, but I want you all to know that there is something below the level of programming that you do something something goes something's going on inside the computer that's at a, le, a more what's the word I'm looking for barbaric level than what you're doing and here's a little schematic here's the here's the um, um, just the, the bits ones and zeros all right here's the uh, assembly code and you can see move. Um, I forget what STR stands for. Um, I think LDR is something about load uh, directly to uh, register. All right, but it's that's the assembler language. All right, like I said, you all won't deal with, with either one of these. High level languages. That is what you're all going to work with for the rest of the semester. High level languages represent a giant leap towards easier programming. Um, the syntax of these are similar to English. They're readable. Um, if I give you there, there's th there are thousands of languages um, out there. I mean, literally thousands of languages. If I give you one, you could probably read it and kind of get an idea what's what's going on, uh, even if you're not a programmer, because it is written in English. All right. 
uh, we divide the, the higher level languages into two groups. There are procedural languages and object oriented languages. Uh, an example, some of the code and by the fourth week, you'll understand what this means. You can see this uh, if X is greater than counter, counter equals counter plus one, right? That's the kind of stuff that you will see in the program and that we're going to do. All right, here's drawing that kind of sums up what I was just talking about. You've got. Think of on here on the left side, you've got a programmer. I think I should have put a stick figure of a man and I should have probably over here on the far right put a picture of a computer. All right. The man will write it like this. You know, you see this while n is greater than zero. That's the kind of computer programming you're going to do. When you compile it, it actually speaks to the computer in an assembly language, which through an assembler talks to it in machine lab, uh, machine language. So everything that you all do, you all see my cursor going up and down, is going to be on this side, the left side of the compiler. We are going to write code and it's going to compile and there's going to be magic happen over here that we will not see, but I just want you to know that it's actually going on. All right, any questions on that? Sometimes I find myself picking up speed, so nobody's asked me to slow down yet. Uh, but like I said, these PowerPoints are available. If you want to rewatch, maybe it will spark your memory on something I said, or you can contact me and ask me. OK, like I mentioned in a previous slide, what are the, the higher level languages? They're procedural languages and object oriented languages. Excuse me, uh, procedural. These were the early high level uh, and they're called procedural languages. If you remember the other day, I showed you my history with programming and I showed you the stack of punch cards and then I showed you the reel to reel. Um, uh, magnetic um, um, programming and then I showed you the Tandy 1000 where I told you they wrote uh, most of the programs were written in COBOL and Fortran. All of that programming was procedural languages. By procedural languages, I mean it says tells the computer do this, do that, do this. It's a straight top to bottom program. It's just one instruction after another. Um, it's sort of procedural would sort of be like that. I told you about the instructor uh, wanting me to write a algorithm to walk up and make a copy. It's like that all the way from the time I leave to the time I come sit down. It's just one continual um, set of instructions one algorithm and that's what these are some of the examples include c uh, which c plus plus and java the languages come from cobol fortran lisp perl html vb script these are all old code all all this is old languages but there's a lot of legacy code out there and a lot of times people who become programmers have to go back and learn this so they can take their new fancy code in C++, Java, Sharp, or C Sharp, and make it tie into these. So these procedural languages are still out there, lots of equipment, uh, especially from my understanding, the banking industry still has a lot of these out there. Object-oriented programming, that is what we are gonna do in this class. Object oriented um, is is the modern day high level languages. Uh, object oriented means on modules. Um, what you do is call it what you write code that you can write small chunks of code and reuse them. All right. For now, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this so it don't scare you all off. You'll write a small chunk of code that all it does is um, um, calculate a batting average, all right? And you write a program for baseball, and instead of every time rewriting that same code, you'll just call on this function. Um, you'll call on this function to do this, and you don't it, you don't have to keep do it's not a top to bottom. Uh, you will use smaller pieces of code over and over again. Uh, these are called methods and classes, 
and that's the key to object oriented is not having to recreate your work all the time. Um, object oriented programming languages include C++, Visual Net, Java. Um, C++ and Java make up. Uh, I guess it depends on who's trying to sell you, but the two together probably make up the huge majority of the coding that goes on out there today. If you know C++, you pick up Java real fast. If you know Java, you can pick up C++ real fast. They're really similar. All right. See, we get any any questions? All right, running out of time. Got to kind of speed it up. All right. What a what is a program made up of? Language elements. All right. There are five of these, and uh, that's all we've got left today. Keywords also known as reserve words. This is a C++ program over here to the right. Can you all see it well enough for me to talk about it? Can you all see the double equals num1 equals zero? Can you read that? I can. OK. Yeah. yeah. All right. So keywords are also known as reserved words. They're just like it says, they're reserved. They have special meaning. Um, they can only be used for an intended purpose. Um, if you look over here and see uh, in blue, they're, they're always colored. You see the word double? That means that this is going to be a number and it's going to be a long number. I won't get into the length of it now, but that means that this place in memory is going to be a number and um, it's going to be a long one. You cannot name anything else in this program double. It is a reserved word, all right? Uh, you could probably, if you really are really headstrong and want to name it, name something double, you could probably make it a capital D and it would work. But lowercase d, double, you is a reserved word you can't use for anything else. Same with anything else that is colored on this screen. Those are reserved words. Uh, most of the the C plus plus key, well, all of the C plus plus keywords are in lowercase. You'll probably hear me refer to it more like as reserved words in the future. All right, programmer defined identifiers. All right, that's stuff that you, the programmer, and you will be the programmer as early as next week. Um, you define the identifier. If you look in this program, this double num1 equals zero, what this is is you, the programmer, have called a certain place in memory. You've called it num1, all right? You're the programmer. You named it num1. You could have called that anything. You could have called it my num, uh, our num, the num, anything you want to call it. And that means that there's a long number, double, and you've put a number out there and you've actually even went ahead and made that number zero. The number could be, I think it's up to 15, 15 places, 15, 15 characters long for a double, I think, um, but you've just made it zero just to go ahead and set it to something, all right? So programmer defined is anything that you call it. You, the programmer, have total freedom creative rights over naming things, anything you want. There is certain thing, a certain, uh, not rules, but etiquette for naming things. It, you, when you name them, it's usually if you, uh, proper if you start by with a lowercase letter. Uh, I'm going over these now just because I'm trying to follow the book. All this is stuff that you, we will go over over and over and over and over again. So this isn't a big deal if you're if, to learn this right now. All right, program is also made up of operators, all right? Operators are similar to everything you, you're used to in math, right? We go over in this program, look down here to line 20, all right? I've got num1 plus num2 the operator here is a plus sign i'm just going to add whatever i had set aside in num1 to num2 and i'm going to put that total well that yeah that total inside of something that i have named total all right so in this line here 
the equal sign is an operator and the plus sign is an operator. All right, it is really important, really, really important. One of the main things of this class is learning the operators and how to use them uh, properly inside of a program. Punctuation, all right. This will be everybody's biggest struggle in this class is punctuation. All right, punctuation um, characters marked the beginning of a statement or separate items in a list. In C++, a semicolon is equivalent of a period in English. It marks the end of a complete statement. So one of the lines in computer science is chasing the semicolon. You're going to have you're going to have programs that won't work because you don't have the semicolon in the right place or you're going to have it have it where it won't work um, because you've put another character in the wrong place. Part of learning C++ is when and where to use use the punctu punctuation. All right, like I said, this is going to be one of the keys and we're going to start next week. We're going to put out our first program probably um, Tuesday or uh, or Thursday. We're going to start putting out simple text programs, but uh, you all will see then how how important punctuation is. Between now and then you definitely need to get your get the software downloaded. And the final part is syntax. OK, syntax is the rules that must be followed when constructing a program. All right, syntax, and this is a key thing that might be asked on tests. Syntax dictates how and when you use the other four elements. When do you use keywords? When do you define your own identifiers? When you use operators and when you use punctuation? That's what syntax is. You'll hear me use the word syntax every class period for the rest of the semester or any other uh, programming class that you take with me. All right, guys, you got any questions on that? That's the lecture for today. Uh, the PowerPoint is on. Um, the PowerPoint is um, on under files. You all can watch it and fill in the blanks with your notes, but I definitely suggest that you at least download it and have these notes. Um, one other thing I want to share with you. All right, I don't I don't have it up. I thought I had I had uh, Canvas up when you get on Canvas. If you go, it'll be under an assignment and it'll be under files. There is a word file that has all 11 or 12 of your all's names and underneath of it is a one line. One line of uh, ones and zeros. They're broken in half. I didn't I wasn't mean and run them together and make you have to pull them apart. They're in groups of eight, but each one has a famous movie line between six and I think 11 characters long, and it's assigned to you. So you have one line that you have to do the binary conversion for. Just drop it in some kind of doc and submit it. It's an easy 10 points, but I think it's important that you know at least practice once how to um, how to go for binary code from ones and zeros to actually using the act, I mean, using the ASCII chart and go into some kind of um, sentence that somebody can read. All right. On Monday, we start code. It's really important that you have your software downloaded. Um, if you're struggling with it, you can contact me this weekend. I don't have any plans. Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I don't have any plans, so if you have any trouble, you can feel free to contact me. I'm just going to be doing honeydews around the house. My wife's got set aside for me. She works, so it, you won't be bothering me. But if you have trouble downloading the software, please contact me. 
All right, guys, you got any questions, comments, concerns? So, but actually, I'm going to head over uh, uh, to the uh, meeting to uh, schedule the uh, activities. OK. All right. Well, guys, you all have a good weekend, and I will see some of you uh, Tuesday up in. Um, I'll see some of you Tuesday up in study skills or dual credit and. Um, the rest of you well, I'll see everybody on this program. Remember Tuesdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays meet here just like we met today. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Uh, have a nice weekend. weekend. Yep. Don't forget your don't forget your two minor homeworks or two small homeworks. Don't forget them. Bye. Have a good one, Mr. Martis. All right. You too.